Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit HispanicAchievers.org. We're in hard times and some of us are going to need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure, and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. Welcome to Latinas, like it or not. I'll be the, I'll be the host of the show tonight, and my name is Alma Otero. And today, we're going to be talking about role models. And uh, when we talk about role models, we have it also on the Latin culture, you know, and women's. You know, it's, we're not just the ghetto. We're not just the one are uneducated that are creating bochinches out there that don't have any education, that are just no good living out of food stamps. We actually have role models. That's right. Yeah. We have lawyers, doctors, politicians, we have, you name it, you know, people that are becoming so influential in the culture nowadays that now we have the pleasure to meet Lourdes Perez Ramirez. I have the pleasure to introduce you to her and then she's gonna talk about her cause a little bit, what she's been doing lately. So how you yeah. doing, Lourdes? I'm great, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Well, it's a pleasure. Um, <laughs> Um, I don't think there's a lot, a lot to say about me. Um, my name is Lourdes Perez Ramirez. I'm from Puerto, Puerto Rico. And um, I came here to Florida via Iowa. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm delighted to be here in Florida, um, especially in this central Florida area. Mm -hmm. I am a journalist by training, also an educator by training. Uh, I used to be a teacher. I taught at the University of Puerto Rico with my husband. And here I, I founded uh, and I preside an organization, a nonprofit organization uh, called Hispaneduca. Oh. And this is what we do at Hispaneduca. Hispaneduca was created um, with, with the goal of helping Hispanic parents understand what um, education policies are out there that affect in a negative and a positive way, Hispanic mm -hmm. students from you know uh, being able to achieve in education what they can achieve. You know, there is a myth out there that uh, Hispanic parents do not care for education. What do you think about that? Do you think oh, that we I, I think that's the myth, and research has demonstrated that's a myth. Hmm. It's just that Hispanic parents care for education in different ways. Tell okay. me a little bit about what's the difference between the Spanish. Uh, versus the the well, more, all the old cultures out okay. there. Okay, um, the uh, the education department, the education system in in the state uh, requires, even by law, by the no shall live behind law, any any law that uh, has been put into effect in terms of education, uh, the parents become involved in school because there's also research that supports that the more a parent is involved in their, in their children education, the higher the child achieves. That's right, okay? yeah, that's right. So that's research, they have, um, um, you know, uh, proved that's a myth. The, the thing is um, that many of our Hispanic parents come from other countries, Latin American and Central American uh, countries, basically South America, and culturally they are different, and we have to respect that differences. For example, <clears throat> I am from Puerto Rico, and Puerto Rico parents are, you know, are used to going to school and ask um, the teachers, you know, what's going on with my child? Yes. Why did my child got an F or an A or whatever? They're pretty much involved as they're far as much what they grades, what they up engaged. to. So what's exactly. the difference between the other Latins coming here well, to the U.S.? Well, in, in many South, uh, South American countries, mm -hmm. uh, parents uh, have very, very defined authority lines. You know, parents are the maximum authority at home, and the teacher is the maximum authority at school. 
Mm. And those two roles do not, those, those two areas do not blend. Hmm. You respect whatever the teacher does, and you trust what the teacher is going to do for your children, yes. and, the, and, and, the par- and the teacher respects what the parents, the parents' authority at home. Mm-hmm. But that, that doesn't happen here. It's not that each one doesn't respect the other, okay? It's just that um, parents from many South American countries come here and assume, you know, start in that point in line. Okay, mm. so you know, let's the teacher is the authority until they face that this system, which requires I mean, requires and even mandates parents to be involved to knock on the teacher's door and say, Hey, you know, what's going on with one? Hmm. Why, what is this testing? Why, why, is, why does it take, have to take yes. this test? So, your, com- your nonprofit organization. In what way is contributing to help in that situation? Okay, so what we do is, uh, I come from the education arena, Mm -hmm. and before I used to work here uh, in Iowa, I worked for ACT. ACT is one of those test makers. Oh. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So I have a little bit of inside knowledge of what's going on, Mm -hmm. because many of the Hispanic students never made it to those tests. Hmm. You know, they did not achieve the what they call the benchmarks, okay? One, two, three, four, you know, Is ladder. it a language barrier? It's language barrier. It's cultural barrier. Mm-hmm. It's you, um, also an equity barrier, hmm. okay? Equity because um, many Hispanic children who come to this country come with limited resources, limited la- language proficiency, so they need to start this race behind the other children. Oh, See? so they're already at disadvantage with the rest they of the They're already at disadvantage, exactly, exactly. Okay. So mm-hmm. m- my organization um, tries to educate parents, you know, hey, you have the right to do this, you need to do this, you don't have to do this. <laughs> and um, right now we're preparing um, in, in, in a series of modules and workshops mm-hmm. to teach them what is pol- uh, politi- you know, education public policy. It's not about politics. Mm-hmm. We don't necessarily are asking them to get involved in politics, yes. although policy and politics are very uh, closely related. Yes. But you know, so they feel, they feel confident, they feel you know, at ease requesting a teacher, hey, I need to talk to you this Friday. I see. You know, yeah. usually Hispanics are very respectful of authority. Yes. So they would say, you know, can you please, don't be afraid, just demand. You're yes. the client. You're the client. Yes. So, so what, are, what are basically has been the consequences of this system being implemented up to this day? That's a great question. One of the, um, the worst consequences is that our Hispanic children do not do very well at the uh, high stake testing. Mm-hmm. High stake test is that which conveys uh, a consequence. If you don't pass the test, you don't graduate. You don't get promoted to another grade level. Yeah, that's it, contrary to formative tests where you, the, the teacher teaches you a unit yeah. on birds, and then she immediately tests you on birds. Mm. Okay, immediately. So she knows where you stand. She knows your strengths and your weaknesses. Yes. Okay? And she can help you with the curriculum. That doesn't happen with a high stake testing. Wow. Yeah. So who do you think is responsible for this to happen? Is it the parents that not, they, don't, they don't have the education enough? Or is it the school system? Who is responsible for this to happen? And how we can make a difference? So how we can yeah. um, inform or make better choices and be more involved and to, so this doesn't keep happening over and over again. Yeah. Um, well, I think the responsibility, everybody's responsible. The mm. parents are responsible for their children. So it's up to them. They need to know that they have the responsibility to go knock on the door, yes. um, complain. But many of them, as, as a you know, um, non-experimental survey that I did last, uh, last summer, mm-hmm. many are afraid that the school will retaliate against their children. Hmm. So, but the, the parent is responsible. The parents are responsible to know that. Yes. And um, the teachers are responsible also, and the system is responsible as well. I agree with you. Yes, I think it has to be a mutual understanding that if they both 
uh, show any interest in the both. Um, yeah. We either we also educate the parents, yeah. as also do something with the school system Absolutely. to help Absolutely. these people. I also have, I believe, also. I mean, you're the expert in, he in here, but I'd like to find out how, what is your take on uh, the the Spanish that come here that barely the parents have barely any education. Um, some of them they only know barely how to write and read. So how they don't have if their upbringing wasn't about educating their children, mm -hmm. or educating themselves. How can they contribute if their culture was not, they were not raised well, in that manner? Well, because we're not talking about educating the parent about education. We're, ta we're talking about educating the parent about their rights and responsibilities towards their children and the school system. I mean, it doesn't matter if they don't know how to read or they don't know how to speak English, mm -hmm. you know? In fact, that's what I exist. Mm -hmm. I have parents um, who call me and, and ask me, you know, can you come with me to school? And, and, and tell them what I feel, what I need, and, and that's what I do. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that <laughs> I'm also a coach, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that yeah. is great, yes. So mm -hmm. you seem to be very passionate about it. How did your passion start it? Well, my passion started um, when I uh, work at ACT. I call, uh, there were parents who called me because I participated at Univision. Oh, um, okay. Uh, yeah, program, and parents would call me crying. Hmm. You know, many things, and I ended up crying in the afternoon, and, and I went home crying because that was happening. Yes, you want to make a difference. You want to yes. help, right? And, I mean, we have three children. We have been able to educate them all. We are educated people. Our parents were educated, so why not help others? Okay, so we're going to be taking a break, and um, this is Latinas Like It or Not. We'll be right back. We're in hard times, and some of us are going to need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure, and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. Well, here at Latina Like It or Not, we are very conscious about our nutrition. And we have a planned nutrition approach mm -hmm. because we're always on the go, of right? Mm -hmm. I Absolutely. mean, professional women on the go, sometimes we don't even have time to eat. And this breakfast. is so bad. It is horrible. Yeah. But here we have replacement shakes for breakfast, a meal replacement, and they're awesome. And this is a dietary supplement. But before we even start, we have to cleanse herself. Detoxification is a really good thing, ladies. Get the pipes clean. <laughs> Come on. Come That's on. Word like you, you never yeah. done that? Okay. And on the go. And on the go, because we're always on the go. And with Plant Nutrition, we'll get all the nutritional supplements that we need. Uh, we have vitamins, we have vitamin supplements, and we have the replacement shakes. And we have a nutritional guide to let you know what are some of the foods that we should avoid, like sugar. So, okay. and oftentimes <laughs> when you start a diet anyway, you, you need to have yourself really detoxified. You need to detox yourself. And so this is a great introduction to any kind of diet or healthier Absolutely. lifestyle you'd like to promote. Or Absolutely. In, so in Plan Nutrition, this is the preferred sponsor of Latina Like It or Not. Plan Nutrition, remember <laughs> ladies, get rid of the sugar, get rid of the carbs, get rid of everything that makes you fat and have plant nutrition. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be, be a, a proud Hispanic. Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on, on your car. car. I, I want to be, be a doctor. doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit hispanicachievers.org. Welcome to Latinas, like it or not. And again, you have your host, Alma Otero, and we are interviewing today Lourdes, and we're talking about the school system and how she's a role model. So Lourdes, trying. <laughs> no, you are. You know, making a difference, and that's what counts. So tell me, Lourdes, what do you think about the, the standard test system? Tell me a little bit about it, since you already know the ins, out, and out. So mm -hmm. how do you feel about that? Well, you know, um, I'm not against standardized testing or against testing per se. Mm -hmm. As a teacher, I know that uh, 
you need tests to evaluate on a formative or an a summative way where your students are yes. so you can you know help them with their um, weaknesses and strengths. The problem with high stake tests, like I said before, is that there is so much involved in them. They, they, have, they have been given so much weight in the decisions um, that the system makes, not only for students, but listen, this is what has happened. If your child um, do not pass a test, the high stake test, like the new uh, test with the new Florida standards, mm -hmm. if you don't pass, if your child does not pass them, he might not be able to go to third or fifth grade depending on the, on the, on the grade they are. Mm -hmm. But not only that, they're being used to evaluate teachers. And you might say that's okay, but it's not. Because imagine that I have high cholesterol and I go to the doctor and he says, Lourdes, you need to do some cholesterol testing so we can control that, okay? We can help you. And I go to the laboratory, I do my cholesterol, and the doctor uses my results with you to okay. measure your cholesterol. Okay. Okay? So that's what they're doing with the high-stake testing nowadays. The, the children, in fact, the, the system is giving the teachers either money or firing them if they don't help achieve, the students achieve. Okay. Okay? Not only that, summing that all, adding all that up, the schools are given a grade, a letter grade, A, B, C, D. And what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Uh -huh. That's a very good question. The problem is that children are not standardized. Standardized, you can use the standard testing if you are a lawyer and you need to take your bar exam. If you're a doctor and you need to take your um, certification mm -hmm. test or, or a teacher you need to take your certification test but you know when you're using one instrument and we have a problem here in terms of reliability and validity uh, reliability is if that um, camera is supposed to take good visual okay mm -hmm. it's reliable because every time you use it it takes good pictures but what if you use that camera to hit someone, okay? That, what you did with your camera, I mean, this is an extreme example, but you, um, the camera was not um, made for that. The camera was made to take good um, visuals. So what okay? do you think is the solution? The solution is, we are, pro many, many of our education advocates are, pro are pro um, um, suggesting, do more summative testing. Summative is, you know, unit test, unit test. Instead of unit test and unit test, and at the end, mm -hmm. um, test the child in things that he has not learned. Why? Because testing takes so much time of prepping, preparing for the test, mm -hmm. that teachers are not teaching. Mm -hmm. Teachers are teaching the child how to take a test. That's right. Not content information, mm -hmm. see? But my understanding is that they're teaching content information also in preparing for the test. No. No? I mean, there's no time for teaching now. Mm -hmm. There are so many days of teaching, I mean of testing, yeah. that the teachers can hardly start a unit and finish it. In fact, let me tell you um, a mm -hmm. case. I have, um, they're my friends when the moms call me, now they're my friends. Mm -hmm. Antonia called me. Antonia is a lawyer from Colombia. And um, she doesn't, uh, he's not proficient in English. But listen what is happening to her child. Her child is a musician. He plays the violin. So in order for him to be able to take all these tests, the school doesn't allow him, didn't allow him to take um, violin. Oh, okay? okay. No, no, um, no recess, no nothing. All that time is being used to prepare for the test, mm. Alma. The, t the, the children, the little ones, are having, are having um, depression, no races, no resting, well, no music, no art, no nothing, wow. no PE, no physical education. That's a shame. I mean, if you want to educate, you need to educate the whole human being, the yes. whole individual. I agree. Okay? So teaching them to, to take the test, yes. that's another type of skill. But you know what, I, I, when it comes to the school grading, my understanding is the schools that do poorly, they get more funds. 
Well, let me tell you why some schools do more poorly than others. Mm -hmm. Let's take two schools that do very well. Um, Celebration High School and um, what other? Winter Park High School. Those schools do very well. What do you, what do you think they have in common? You tell me. <laughs> well, they have in common the demographics of the parents. They are high, medium to high um, uh, income parents and so families. So the income makes a difference. There is a close relationship, a very positive. Positive rela- correlation means that when one moves up, the other moves up. So the higher the income, the higher the grades. But what about those teachers that have make a difference in the poor population and in schools where there was no hope? There are a ton of good teachers. I mean, most of the teachers are great. Mm -hmm. The thing is that if you go to a school where most of your your children are either Hispanic, poor, or African American, they tend to have the demographics are very similar, low income, okay? Our children, Hispanic children, are going through that, most of them, okay? And uh, they don't have resources. They, they only pay, they only hire, they tend to hire. The tendency is to hire uh, rookie teachers, new teachers without experience. So who's responsible for hiring those teachers that oh, are the system. The system is responsible for this whole mess. So what you basically, correct me if I'm right, yeah. but what I'm understanding is that so they send in the good teachers and at the, at best, the, high, schools. the best schools mm-hmm. and they hire rookies, mm-hmm. unexperienced um, uh, teachers at the schools uh, in the low income yeah. communities yes. and it's affecting already. Yeah. I would suggest um, if you're interested a book called Chain, Chain of Nation, mm-hmm. Chain of Nation um, by um, the author na- last name is Cosol, Jonathan Cosol, Cosol mm-hmm. K-O-Z-O-L and he writes about that. It's beautiful how the, the awful situation that he explained because he's been at, sco- at several schools in mm-hmm. several states for many, many years. He used to be a teacher, okay? So now he goes to schools, he, he see some, some of these schools don't even have water, don't even have, um, you know, sanitary uh, facilities. Yeah. They don't have um, basketball, nothing. No music, no nothing. Wow. And this is what we in the education um, arena, we call the education apartheid. There's a fence, these are the uh, well-off, and these are our children. So and that's what I'm fighting, I guess. <laughs> yes, and I can see why you're passionate about it, because you've been in, in, in many different, yeah. uh, you had the knowledge, you had the background from my understanding. Well, I still have to learn a lot. A lot well, learn. we're always learning every day, yeah. don't we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. That's education. <laughs> yes. But that's, that's my point. That's why there's so much the difference yeah. and why, you know, people like me and, and many others, I'm not alone in this um, um, business of helping um, people. Um, so what is coming up lately? What, what is it that you are doing? What is that ahead? What plans do you have in the future to make a difference? Well, I, I want Spaneduca to become a national organization that does especially this, specifically this, educating for education policy and educating parents so they can become a lobbyist, education lobbyist. And that is where my husband is going to uh, help me. <laughs> he's a lawyer <laughs> and he has lobbied before. Oh, he's a so, lawyer. That's right, he's here. Yeah. And talking about your husband, uh, what you guys don't know, this behind cameras, we were uh, talking a little bit about what I do and what she does, and she was just telling me she's been married for 40, 40 years. years. Isn't that amazing? It's something that you don't hear nowadays. So tell me, what's the secret? It's been easy for me. It's been hard for him. I mean, I'm, I'm oh, not easy. Oh, you're a tough <laughs> cookie, huh? He's, he's a piece of cake. I'm not. <laughs> so, so tell me, what had been the key to, to making it successful? We're different, and we tolerate, and we accept and love each other. That's it. That's it? That's it. See, for those of you out there that they think that being with someone that is completely different, it's, uh, it's an issue. Well, we have here 40 years, isn't it? I, I don't think I would last you know, long with a person who's just like me. me. <laughs> How stale would it be? How boring would it yeah. be to be in a relationship yeah. that it, you, it's someone just like you? There will be no excitement, right? No. So no. what in these 40 years have you done to keep the relationship that's part to keep you going? Well, we don't have a tug of war. 
<laughs> on a general basis. We oh, but him being a, an attorney. Oh, oh, he's one of the best attorneys because he's <laughs> he he likes to put peace wherever he goes. Oh, see, so <laughs> so he's he's the the key the safe peace. Yes, keep the, he's, a he's a peacemaker. He's a peacemaker. There peacemaker. you go. Yes. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you a, a question. Um, one of the questions that I wanted to, to ask you is that we talk about role models, and uh, we off, do definitely want it. Make sure that we are legacy. We're bringing good role models and the show, so we can motivate all the Latin women mm, yeah. to follow our path, whatever is their passion. So what would you suggest to any, any woman out there that want to make a difference but it's afraid that they don't have what it takes? Well, um, um, I don't think I'm a, uh, you know, the best person to say that because I think uh, women nowadays are doing wonders, like you said in the beginning, and Hispanic women too. Um, I would just say that you know, whatever you have, try to give back. Try to do something for others. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit hispanicachievers.org. Well, here at Latina Like It or Not, we are very conscious about our nutrition. And we have a planned nutrition approach mm -hmm. because we're always on the go, of course. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, professional women on the go, sometimes we don't even have time to eat. And this breakfast. is so bad. It is horrible. Yeah. But here we have replacement shakes for breakfast, a meal replacement, and they're awesome. And this is a dietary supplement. But before we even start, we have to cleanse ourselves. Detoxification <laughs> is a really good thing, ladies. Get the pipes clean. <laughs> Come That's on. the worst. Like you've, you've never yeah. done that? And on the go. And on the go, because we're always on the go. And with Plant Nutrition, we'll get all the nutritional supplements that we need. Uh, we have vitamins, we have vitamin supplements, and we have the replacement shakes. And we have a nutritional guide to let you know what are some of the foods that we should avoid, like sugar. So, and oftentimes when you start a diet anyway, you, you need to have yourself really detoxified. You need to detox yourself. And so this is a great introduction to any kind of diet or healthier Absolutely. lifestyle you'd like to promote. Or Absolutely. So Inter Plant Nutrition, this is the preferred sponsor of Latina Like It or Not. Plant Nutrition. Remember, <laughs> ladies, get rid of the sugar. Get rid of the carbs. Get rid of everything that makes you fat and have plan nutrition. We're in hard times and some of us are gonna need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure, and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. Call now or visit HispanicAchievers.org.